Hey everybody, this is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick, and that obviously was not the performance we want to see from our Philadelphia Flyers. But please, first, if you like the content and have not already, click the subscribe button down below or the easy-to-use widget at the end of this video. But let's get into it. As I said in my first period reaction, at least in that off, kind of bad first period, sloppy from both teams, and both teams that typically in the first period do not do that, and actually have pretty good starts, the Philadelphia Flyers were not able to take advantage of the Tampa Bay Lightning's sloppy play, and Zach Bogosian was able to get the lone goal, obviously on a slap shot where we kept them to the outside pretty good in the first. But other than that, they did not generate, they had the 12 shots, but the Flyers did not generate enough high-class chances against a goaltender like Andre Vasilevsky. As they broke up on the broadcast, and I saw it the entire night, you could see it the whole night, you shouldn't have your bottom six forward producing better and being the get dirty, get to the crease, get to try to get the dirty goals, guys, and not have anybody else following suit with them being able to get out of this goal funk. Zach McEwen and also JVR, James Van Riemsdyk, whose brother Brandon Van Riemsdyk got released by the Royals, by the way, earlier today, but JVR had a heck of a game, he's the only, those two forwards are the only guys that had a very good game, Drew in the top six was noticeable for the first about 25 minutes, he had some good chances in the first period, he was probably the best performer along with Zach in the first period, and then JVR as well, those are the only forwards that were noticeable throughout, but JVR and Zach, especially Zach McEwen, were noticeable throughout, those are really the only positives of tonight's game, now Carter Hart didn't have a bad game allowing four goals, the team in front of him had a pitiful game, and allowed Corey Perry to be wide open, they allowed Stammer to be open, of course Sealer made a block at least, but then obviously Stamkos was able to stay with it, and nobody else was there to help out after the block shot, and then <clears throat> you have Barry Boulay off of the faceoff. He was a sniper in juniors. There's not much you can do about that. But this was just a bad all-around game. The Flyers got outplayed at least 90% of this game. At least they kept the Tampa Bay outside. So that's something that was a positive. And, and then also, at least in the first five minutes of the second, I think the shots were 6-3 to three at the time it happened. And Stammer scored. But the Flyers were able to kind of do what the Lightning were doing in the first where they were able to kind of establish better entries into the zone and better puck possession plays just getting blocked out or having the Lightning cut off the passing lane. But then as soon as Steven Stamkos scored, it was a snap of a finger. The Flyers' second period woes showed up in full force again, and they were not able to do anything, excuse me, as they allowed the net front goal with no guarding at all to Corey Perry, and then Belay is, again, who came back from Seattle, as Tampa claimed him, was able to seal it, which it was sealed already anyway, so he didn't seal, but he was able to really put assault to the wound of this game, getting the fourth goal. So obviously all the stars of this game do not go any really to our Philadelphia Flyers. The shout-out star of the Flyers, I guess, in a losing effort like how I do for the Royals, covering them for Nitty Gritty even when they lose, I still shout-out people that do well for them, would be Zach McEwen. Zach McEwen had his career high in shots tonight. He was a very good player on the ice. The people, the costly players, I think, of tonight's game that were the ones that really stood out to be people that allowed the Flyers to unfortunately have this result would be the Yandel and Sierra line had their first really off game. Well, Yandel hasn't been as squeaky clean lately on a point drought, but that goes in a long way to, he's an outlet passer. If the Flyers can't score a damn goal, he's obviously not going to be able to generate any points. And then Sierra's been pretty solid. Nobody expected him to play the game total he has. He's played it well up to this point. This was a really bad game from that line. And even Provy, I believe, <clears throat> on the evening... Um, they that line wasn't as sharp with Provy and Braun either, as he was a minus three and Justin was a minus one. Honestly, I was talking about Rusty Line and and um defending him between me, Peyton, and Pierlo on his show earlier. That line was the best line, the Risto and Sanheim, and that line was the only good performing defensive line. They weren't squeaky clean, obviously. Nobody was tonight, but that was the only solid performing defensive line. Where the other two were really bad tonight. And that's obviously what causes the Flyers game where Provy and Braun have been really solid this year together. And Seal and Yandel have been good enough this year as Seal has been the guy in the lineup 
for Ryan Ellis being out, of course. But the Flyers, after the first period, keeping Tampa to the outside, played really bad defensive lapses. There were some lapses in the first, but they were pitiful in the second period. They played an awful second period, as we've grown too accustomed to seeing again. Now, as Chris Mayer and Yari Vorlick say on Don't Panic, I'm not panicking about the overall team right now. We have key injuries. Derek Broussard was also out in this game, so that factors into all this equation as well. Um, obviously, AV had to double shift a lot of people, and that kind of adjusts the whole lines. So that makes a difference in the game as well when you're already let out. Kevin Hayes, you're already out a guy like Patrick Brown, who's filling in really solidly and then got injured himself. And you're out um, also um, Lance Green of Flyers Nitty Gritty wrote a very good article on that if you want to check it out, Patrick Brown. And then you're also out Kevin Hayes, who's our best defensive forward, in my opinion, behind Song Couturier. Now, the Flyers, they just didn't generate enough chances in this game. They didn't get to the dirty areas like I talked about in my preview. You have to keep the Tampa Bay Lightning to the outside, which they did a solid job of doing in the first after that, absolutely terrible. And then you have to be able to also block out Andre Vasilevsky, just like Nick Seeler, honestly, that they've locked out our own goaltender on the first goal. They didn't do that. This was a really bad, sloppy game from the Flyers where there was only bits of decentness, like the first at least keeping them to the outside and at least getting some decent chances in the first five of the second before Stammer scored. And then it was all downhill for pretty much the rest of the game, not even just the second period for the Flyers from there, where they really were outperformed from the Lightning in at least 90% of this game, probably more like 95, since there's only two things I really pointed out that were good from the overall team. And then there was Zach McHugh and JVR doing good in the overall game. And then the only defensive line that showed up at all was the Risto line. So this was just not a good game all around. This was like the Calgary game away that Calgary really took it to the Flyers. In good news, though, at least this is only the second game of the season through all the injuries the Flyers are going to or going through that they had to have this bad of a performance and had to really not show up at all like they did <clears throat> in that game against Calgary, or really, I guess we could say third game of the season, because they didn't show up oh too much against the Boston Bruins, but at least showed a little bit more fight in those ga- in that game compared to getting completely outbeat, 4 nothing shutouts in both games against the Calgary Flames and Tampa Bay Lightning. So this has been a reaction to the Philadelphia Flyers' disappointing effort. As Chris Mayer said, this was so frustrating, that's a good way to sum it up that he said on Twitter of Flyers um, fan mania. So that's a great way to sum it up. This has been Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric. If you enjoyed the content and have not already, please subscribe. We appreciate your support. And go Flyers. Let's rebound tomorrow against Florida's other team, the Florida Panthers.